Um, would there ever be a situation where one of the gods agrees and disagrees with another? They cannot be God then if they, if they agree and disagree, if they compromise. A God yeah. to be God, let's go back to the very basics. When we say God, we are talking about a being who is yep. independent, yep. absolute, yep. perfect, yep. and he doesn't have to compromise with others because he's the sovereign king. Yep. Right. So they can act independently. A God who is independent should act independently. So imagine now you have a God called the Father in Christian theology. Yep. Can the Father act independently of the Son? Um, there would never be in disagreement, so the Son would be in submission to it. My question is rather different. Is it possible for the Father to act independently of the Son and the Holy Spirit? The Son would always submit to the Father's will. I'm not talking about the Son submitting or not. I'm talking about the Father. Can the Father say, I want to create a world there? without consulting, agreeing, or discussing with the son. Yep. If it was the son's will, the son would be at one I'm not talking about... Can the father, independently with his own will, without consulting the son who has a will, acting independently, say, I'm going to create a world? They're at one. You're not answering my question. They're at one. No, you're not answering my question. So, same will, same desire. Can the father who has a will and the son who has a will, can the father independently create something without consulting the son? Impossible because the son would be in submission to it. There's no question of a disagreement in the Trinity. Oh, so they're forced to agree? No. Will willingly agree and submission to Willingly them. agree, compromise. Not God, either way. If they're forced to agree, they're not God, because they're not independent, absolute. If they're compromising, they're still not absolute sovereign. Both of the ways, you don't have a sovereign king, a sovereign God, who is independent for his own actions. If I'm forced, I'm no longer powerful enough, independent enough, sovereign enough. I'm not sovereign. Sovereignty means, that's it. My will is might and command. If I'm forced to do that, I'm no longer sovereign. If I'm compromising with you, I am being lenient somehow. I'm saying, okay, fine, you know what, I will listen to you. That's what compromising is. Being, coming down from my position of sovereignty and lowering myself. That is not being sovereign. Either way, there is this logical problem of the Trinity. In, in academia, it's called the logical problem of the Trinity, LPT. It's an LPT problem. Christians haven't solved that problem because it amounts to either tritheism, three gods, or it amounts to partialism, which is each member or person of the God as a partial God. You can't have either way. Christianity, in that sense, theologically, I'm afraid, my friend, it's not coherent belief. It's a belief system you have to believe by faith by some kind of personal experience. But rational thinking and processing, you you'll reject it. Just like you'll reject the belief that this tripod is God, rationally. You'll say, no, this is not worthy of calling God or the creator, almighty, sovereign, independent, absolute, perfect, the necessary being. You reject it. Yeah. Masood, just to go back, he was rejecting uh, John 17, 3, the Father is the only true God. I didn't reject that. So do you... What was your explanation? No, no, I didn't I reject that. Okay, can you explain it again? I believe, the Father, I believe the Father is God. No. The only true God? Is the Father the only true God? Um, yes, and at one with the Son, who's also the only true God. No. They're one God. Listen, if somebody says he is the only human being on planet Earth, can there be a second human being on planet Earth? Let's see if he answers it. I mean, I feel like that's a different question. When we talk about a person, no, no, when, when we talk about only, 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 when we when we use language and we exclude, make exclusion by saying only, like God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son. Can there be another I begotten feel like Son? The concept of God could like transcend a person. Like no, no, that's no, that's just go, a personification. Let's of go concept, back to the concept of only. Only. So when no, we, John three sixteen is it? Only yeah. one is that John three sixteen? What it says. One person. That God sent His only begotten Son. Son. Can there be another begotten Son? No, but I think the Why? Only one God. Because only excluded that. Yeah. So yeah. when if Christ you think of them as people. No, when Christ said that the Father. the Father is the only true God, can there be another true God apart from the Father? Yeah. No. No. Exactly. No, thank you. So you now, the exactly. Now so you. now, when you have the <laughs> Trinity, in which there is a Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Son says the only true God is the Father, can the other two be the only true God, a part of the true God? 
Exclusion. 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 Yeah, I feel like this is, on the one hand, I want to say yes. On the other hand, I feel like it's it's semantics. A it's not bit. semantics. But like you, it's the language that we yeah. used in description, the language that we use. Yeah, 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 then suppose, you have to exclude it. That's why then you have to exclude that uh, apart from the Father, no one can be the only true God. And that is explained by who? Jesus himself. Jesus Look at that. Himself. Jesus himself is clarifying to you that he's not no. God. The only true God is the Father. In fact, he also tells us he's one with the Father and one with the Spirit. So are you. Does that Pardon? make you God? So are you. Yes. Does that make you God? No. There's What's no discussion the explanation then. explanation of John 17 through when Jesus says the Father is the only true God and he excluded himself out as well as the Holy Ghost. How do you explain that? Because he's one with the Father. He didn't say that. <laughs> He does tell us he's one no, with the when he's one with the Father and he's one with the disciples, you know that this oneness is not one of divinity. Because he says, in fact, this is what I find strange Christians do not read the context. And Muslims or non-Christians have to give them the context. Go on, what's the context? Ah, uh, good. Go on, go on. Context is this. Jesus says, just as I and the Father are one, so shall you be one in us. So remember his first statement, just as I and the Father are one. So he's making comparison to what he stated earlier. That oneness, you will also be one with us. So if the first oneness is one of divinity, the second oneness is the same, one of divinity. If the first oneness is was not of divinity, then the second oneness is not of divinity. Let me explain. So either it's one of divinity or one in purpose. If the disciples are all one with God, either they're all divine or they're all in a purpose of working together in one purpose of, you know, righteousness or whatever and so on. Which one is it? Well, in Revelation, the image that we're given is of the Son. Can we deal with this verse first and then I we am, go to Revelation? I am. Go ahead. So the image that we're given in Revelation is the Son upon a throne, worshipped and exalted as God by people, as children who are worshipping as one um, church, as one being. Okay. Yep. So you have Jesus on the throne. Yep. And elsewhere we read he's standing on the right hand side of God. As he, when he's acting as a defender, he's standing. So let's understand. Jesus is on the right hand of God. Do you picture one God or do you picture two? One on the right of the other. I didn't forget about the Holy Spirit. Let's, let's not complicate things by bringing the Holy Spirit. So Jesus standing on the right hand of God. He's so standing on the left hand side. On the right hand of God. Yeah, yeah, right. So if you, if you stand on the left hand of him, that means you're not him. Yeah. You're distinct from him. So that's one God and that is what? There's another entity yeah. other than the one God. Yeah, but does, does God have to be an entity? I feel like the, what is it the scriptures are like, the, the people in them are, to me, they're personifications of a broader concept. No, so, when we talk about God, when Jesus says, you know, um, I'm going to my God and your God, yeah. suppose I said that to you as well. Yeah. I have a God that I'm going to. Would you ever take me as God? When I say, I am going to my God, I have a God I'm going to. Any rational human being, sane human being would say, oh, you are saying that you have a God that you're going to. Yeah. That means you are not God so unless you believe the, that is it not there's one God to, sorry, and another God. Does he not say he's going to the Father? No, he says and you are Father too. So he's not exclusive. He's not the Son of God. You are exactly the same Son of God like he is. He I, says, I'm going to my Father. <laughs> Look, if somebody says, I'm going to my Father and your Father, are you the same Son? Pardon? If Jesus said, I'm going to my father and your father, right. is his father exclusive or it's the same father that you have? Same father. Same father, right. Family. So if you are a son of God, if Jesus is a son of God, you are a son of God too, if the same father. Nope, doesn't say that. He says, I'm going to my father and your father. English, language, Greek, the same. But he didn't stop there. He says, I'm going to my God and your God. Now tell me, my friend, does he have a God that he's going to? Yes. Okay. Does God have a God? And he's... Yes. Okay. If God has a God, I would like to know how does God have a God and what is God in your understanding? Because God in my understanding is someone who is independent. He doesn't need another God. It makes no sense for God who is eternally existence without a beginning, everlasting with no end, can or need to have a God for what? Because he's one God with the no, Father. No, no, no. Tell me, why does God need a God in the first place? He's one God with the Father. One second. If you have a God who has a God, can you tell me why this one God or this God needs another God? For what? Does he need anything? For example, is he lacking in knowledge? 
Is he lacking in power? Is he lacking? No. Okay. So was Jesus given power? It's a mission. No, 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 no. Was Jesus given power and authority? And According to the scripture. It's one part from the Father, yes. According to the scripture, did Jesus receive glory? Did he receive power? Did he receive authority? Yep. The answer is yes. So before he received it, did he have them? He always had it and never stopped having no, 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 no. it. Before he received them, obviously he didn't have it. Because if you had it, how can you even receive it? It makes no sense. You didn't have them, that's why you received it. Yeah, I'm no. Yeah. Can I can I give you something that you already have? I mean, if you look, if you're hundred percent knowledgeable, can I give you more knowledge and make you knowledgeable? I mean, you, I, I feel like you can make an argument for uh, unlocking it in a way, like it, it was already there. But if you are one hundred percent knowledgeable, can I give you more knowledge? No. Exactly. So if you are divine to begin with, I cannot make you more divine. Uh, because you already have it. All the divine characteristics or attributes, so, you should have it. I think Michael, have you looked into Islam? Because like, like, clearly, obviously. When I was like 14, which is like 13 years ago. Yes. Perhaps you can look at it now, because what we are saying is, can we you, you, you would not lose anything. Here? You would, in fact, gain more. You would not lose in the belief in God. You would not lose in the belief yeah. or anything about righteous actions to be good to people, to be kind, to be just, to be loving, none of that. You would not lose Jesus Christ. You love him as a prophet and a messenger as he is, because he came to tell the people about God. So there's nothing you're losing. All you'll be doing is molding your belief a little bit here and there, and coming back to the correct concept of God. That's what Islam will be for you. Um, uh, uh, I'm too firm in my Christian faith, as just as I'm you're very right firm in your media. Islamic faith, <laughs> and I can see that uh, you're not. So even if yeah. provide evidence is provided for the truthfulness of Islam, you'd still stick to your firmness? Even if truth was manifested in all its clarity about Islam being true, would you still hang on to Christianity? Uh, so, okay, do we, you're using a word they're called if, okay? Yes, I conditional believe, statement. I don't believe that is possible, but if and only if, then yes. Yeah, good. But so, I in believe that is so in principle, you are open to the idea if Islam is established to be true to you, you would accept it because if it's true, it's true. I am so firm and so confident in my Christian faith in Jesus Christ. Okay. I, it's not a possibility in my mind. Right. So you go born again Christians so, who said the same thing for and they, Muslims. <laughs> they were never born again to begin with, you will say, right? Pardon? Would you say they were never born again to believe? Eh, I didn't have but, any firm thoughts on that. Right, right. So do you have a guarantee that you're going to go to heaven? Confidence, yes. Yeah. So if you now become a Muslim, you still have that guarantee, right? Um, I don't have a firm view on that. No, no. If you have a guarantee mm. that you're going to go to heaven, irrespective, unconditional, yeah. then it doesn't matter if you become an atheist or a Muslim, you're going to go to heaven. But the fact that you realize that that's not the case, that means your belief your salvation, sorry, is conditional. Conditional in remaining Christian. Conditional in be, it's conditional. So you don't have a guarantee, you don't have a, a, a certificate where God says they got a one-way ticket to heaven. You have a conditional faith. Conditional faith can easily be understood and say, look, that means I need to worship God. We are not asking you to worship Prophet Muhammad are we? If, if you do, you'll go to hell. <laughs> That's for sure. We are asking you to worship the God of Christ, the God of Muhammad, peace be upon them all. We are asking you to worship the God who is the creator of everything. And Jesus was a Muslim. <laughs> like 700 years later, Muslims came along. Do you know what Muslim means though? What does it mean? Someone who submits and surrenders their will, willingly and sincerely, to the will of okay, the one okay. true God. So in the, the absolute literal sense of the word? Yeah, so he was a Muslim because he submitted to God. Yep. Yeah. But not, not in the word that I would have used, but fair enough. But, but that's the reality. He submitted. So he is a Muslim. You have to accept the fact Jesus that Jesus is a Muslim. Did he pray like a Muslim, putting his forehead on the ground, weeping and crying and, and, and surrendering to say, not according to my will, but according to your will? Let this cup be away from me in the Garden of Gethsemane? Yeah. So he prayed like a Muslim too. Did he wash like a Muslim before ablution, before he prayed and so on? He did that too. Did he fast? Yes. Did he pray? Yes. Did he do charity? Did... Yeah. Any church? You know what? All of the things that you see about Christ, that like he is a very good Muslim. That's what we believe about him. Himself a Christian. 
Who, by the way, who did Jesus say was the only true God? According to Jesus, he said, who is Father. the only true God? Father. According to you, who is the only true God? Yeah. The Father. <laughs> only the Father? So you're you're a Unitarian? Because I believe the Son's God, not what the Son says. So say again? I believe the Son's God, not what the Son says. I oh, so it's not just the Father who is God then? Um, one God, three persons. No, no, but that's that's what Jesus did not believe. Jesus believed only one person was the only true God, not three persons. How many persons is the Father? Where did, where did Jesus say that? John 17, Where did he say there was only one person? John yeah. 17, 3. Can we establish the Father say? is three person or one person? The Father is yeah. one person. And he said the Father is the only true God. So how many persons is the only true God? Exactly. Three. <laughs> the Father is only one person, come on. And he said that one person who is the Father is the only true God. No, he says the only true God. And who is that? Okay, is the Father one or three persons? The Father is one, part of three persons. No, no, the Father is not part of three persons. The Father is one person, Jesus is one person, the Holy Spirit is one person. Am I right? Yep. Okay. So we got three persons that we have identified so far. From these three, who was the only true God? All of them. You see, that's where he goes against Jesus Christ. Because in John 7 and 3, it says only the Father. Okay, so now you tell me, should I believe you or Jesus? Because you clearly are, are, are against what Jesus is saying. No, 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 no. <laughs> no? Okay, what is Jesus saying in John 7 and 3? Um, well, did you bring the, did you, the Father's God, the only true God? No, no, what did he say again? You need to speak up, I can barely hear you. Uh, is it my hard to understand accent? No, no, I understand your accent, it's just the volume. Most people don't. <laughs> okay. I don't really understand. If, Je if, if Jesus says this is eternal life, that they may know you, the Father, yep. the only true God, yep. and Jesus Christ, whom you sent, okay, is clearly acknowledging over there that the only true God is one person, that the Father, and there's only one, sorry, the, the Christ is Him, Jesus. Okay, so we have got, we have got two, di two different persons identified differently. The Father is one person who's been identified, are you listening? Mm -hmm. The Father is one person who's been identified as the only true God, and we got Jesus who has been identified as a Christ. The Christ is not the only true God, it is the Father who is the only true God. So because you believe that God is three persons and Jesus believes that God is only the Father, so your belief is different to that of Jesus's and different to all the prophets in the Bible. Because there's not a single prophet or a messenger or Jesus even who worshipped and prayed to anyone like a triune God. It is only you Christians who came in the 4th century. Yeah. Okay, okay. The Trinity was established in the 4th century. Okay? So you have to worship a triune God. This is not the message of the Bible. Okay? So really, honestly, you know, should I believe you or Jesus? Okay, so if I need to believe Jesus, then your belief is something that should be rejected. No problem. What's your name? Michael. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.